This is Brandon, and in this video, we're going to explore two new input methods for glass, a custom eye tracker, and a device called a Makey Makey that allows you to use everyday objects as input. To a large extent, input methods govern the context in which a device can be used, such as when standing in line at a crowded coffee shop, or for people with disabilities who can comfortably use it. By expanding the options available, we can make glass useful in more situations and by more people. Glass has three primary input methods, head gestures, speech. Okay, Glass. Take a picture. Okay, Glass. Share with Andrew Miller. And touch gestures. However, there are times when these aren't sufficient, such as when your hands are already in use, or when they're just cold. When you don't want to disturb the people around you by using voice input, or when touch gestures can be distracting, such as during a meeting, or when driving. Eye tracking allows for accurately determining a user's gaze and their eye motion, which can be used as gestures. Eye input can enable intuitive item selection and interactions that are more subtle than touch gestures. To do this, we extend the Pupil Project's webcam modifications, along with our custom 3D printed mount, to produce a $25 eye tracker for glass. We tear down a webcam and replace two surface-mounted blue LEDs with infrared LEDs to illuminate the user's pupil and we placed the modified webcam in our mount for glass. This model was printed by Form Labs on their high-resolution Form 1 3D printer. These are the only parts required if you'd like to build one yourself. Keep in mind that this is to enable eye tracking and accessibility research on wearables until they become standard with the device. We don't recommend walking around with it on. A common misconception is that glass already has eye tracking built in. There is a proximity sensor which is used for on-head detection and can be used for blink and wink gestures. However, it doesn't know where you are looking. Like our device, the proximity sensor emits an infrared light to sense what is in front of it. This is what the light looks like through our own IR sensitive webcam. Before we jump into eye tracking, let's look at what we can get just by using the detected pupil radius along with the ambient light sensor on glass. We use a dimmer switch to vary the light in the room to observe the relationship between them. Here we plot the ambient light in red along with the pupil radius in green over time. This clearly produces the expected inverse correlation and is shifted since the pupil takes time to correct for the change. This is interesting because it could be used to determine when the pupil size does not match what we'd expect due to a variety of factors such as stress or intoxication. Now we develop a method for performing gestures using the eye tracker. We create zones on the screen and perform a calibration process where the user looks at dots on the display. We treat each zone as a Gaussian distribution and use the Mahalanobis distance to determine if a user is looking at one. Next, we demonstrate a way to manipulate the glass timeline programmatically. This is a browser window, and I have glass connected by USB with debugging turned on. Press home to wake up the device. I can then navigate the menus to take a picture. I can also launch activities directly, such as settings. Launchy and the Wear Script Launcher. In the web keyboard for Glass, I can also use my keyboard keys like left, right, and more. If you have rooted your Glass, you can get slightly snappier performance on simulated touch events by pressing the root button. You can see that it worked by the root logo. Finally, I can connect wirelessly to the device. I now disconnect the USB cable and I can still navigate and launch activities. Now we combine the eye tracking with Scott's web keyboard for glass. Just by using eye gestures, I'm able to navigate the glass display and record a video. The plot shows two zones with red points belonging to neither distribution. We developed a custom eye tracker based on the maximally stable extremal regions algorithm. The pupil region is colored red and an ellipse is fit to it shown in green. The pupil center is denoted by a small green circle. This is a Makey Makey. You plug it into USB and it acts like a keyboard. When the copper buttons are connected to ground, a key is pressed. But the interesting part is that it works even if they are connected with high resistance. 
You can safely make a connection by touching it, or you can use many everyday objects such as Play-Doh. In this example, I wired the Makey Makey to my shirt using alligator clips so that they're not noticeable. I have a ground wire attached, and when I touch the clips, it sends key presses to the web keyboard. The left and right shoulders control the position, and one on the forearm controls tap. This could be useful for users with disabilities that make it difficult to use the touchpad or when using applications that require frequent inputs as the clips can be positioned naturally. As a side note, I don't recommend wearing this at an airport. To pair a Bluetooth keyboard, you can easily sideload the settings APK. This is an NES emulator running in WearScript, and the script handles key presses directly. Next I play Mario by using my shirt as a controller. Glass connects to a local server that streams the button presses. The controls for these examples are simplified so that the left button is a time jump and the right button toggles running on and off. Now I play Mario on glass using only my eye gestures as an input device. The delay is less than a second, and since the game runs about half real time, it's easy to compensate. Interestingly, having a delay allows you to execute actions in advance and then observe the result later. So for now we'll call it a feature. The jump height depends on how long the virtual button is pressed and is hard-coded in the script. Some of the pipes are at the limit that you can jump, and the timing is not always perfect. However, this is a great opportunity to witness an excess of stress known to induce pupil dilation, as an imposing Goomba threatens to ruin my run. It's actually a lot of fun to play this once everything is calibrated properly, and there are very few false button presses, and none in this run. A neat thing about the Makey Makey is that since objects with higher electrical resistance can be used, you can really let your imagination go wild. All you need is glass, two bananas, a Makey Makey and wear script, and you too can turn glass into a very... interesting way to play Mario. <laughs> As a bonus, when your battery dies, you have a nice snack. That's all we have for now, thanks for watching. This is Brandon White, and I'd like to thank Form Labs for printing our eye tracking model on their Form 1. Justin Chase for helping to get the NES emulator running on WearScript. Moritz Kastner and Will Patel for creating the Pupil project from which our webcam modifications are based on. Scott Greenwald for contributing the web keyboard for Glass to WearScript. Everyone else who has contributed to WearScript, including Andrew Miller, Kurt Nelson, Connor Brooks, and Alexander Conroy. And everyone on the Glass team for making this project possible. The code, documentation, and 3D models are available on WearScript.com. If you'd like to collaborate, join us in Open Shades on IRC Freenode.